time is over And I'm gonna take a trail in the world But I gon' love you Yeah, I'm gonna love you I'll give you the world of what I've got The fancy finds, baby, I have not It's gonna love you G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode. Behind me is my 2014 Hobie Pro Angler 14. In today's episode, I'm gonna take you guys through a walk around and tell you exactly how I've got my kayak set up and tell you why I think this is one of the best fishing and tournament kayaks, period. So, hope you enjoyed the episode. As always, if you've got any questions, just yell out in the comments section down below. Hope you enjoy, cheers. Alrighty, starting at the back of the kayak, when I'm in a non-tournament situation, this back area I leave pretty much free. In a tournament situation, a live well sits right there. Now, I just use a simple Esky setup uh, with a lithium battery and a pump. I'm gonna put a couple of photos in as I'm chatting about the live well, but that's worked well for me. In the past, I used to just run a, a regular large live well with a couple of aerators, but I've moved to a more automated solution. In terms of my everyday social situation, I tend to put my camera gear in the back, maybe some wet weathers, some old shoes, um, and my wheels will generally go right in there, like so. So that's how I've got the back of the kayak set up. Generally keep it nice and free. I don't run live wells on social days. I really just don't see much of a need to keep fish on a social outing unless we're in a tournament. And when I am out socially, I'll run the little dip net or little net and just keep it in that back hole right there. Whereas in a tournament situation, I tend to use the larger um, net just to give me a bit more confidence and a bit more reach. And I put the bigger net over the front hatch right there. So that's the back of the yak. Let's keep moving. Now we're really at the business end of the kayak, the big vantage seat. I have mine seated in the higher position. As you can see there, sitting up on the legs. You can put that down all the way to the ground if that position is more comfortable for you. Now these seats are absolutely fantastic, fully adjustable uh, to suit your needs, just to see how your back's going. Um, plenty of adjustment options there. In terms of storage, these are absolutely fantastic as well. The way that I've got mine set up is I've got my day box on the right hand side of me right there and one of my key trays that I use all the time being my jig heads. On the left hand side under the seat I've just got a tray of hard bodies, surface lures as well as the two boxes of cranker crabs. Now once I get out on the water I'll take a couple of things out of that day box and put them into the two side pockets on either side of the kayak. The key things there being braid scissors, pliers, glue, and some scent. While we're talking about storage, excuse the background noise, we are out in nature this morning. Um, the middle storage contain, oh, hatch allows me to put two relatively medium sized trays in, different brands. So I've got a Plano there as well as a Shimano box. And the other key thing that you can do is you can take out this little um, Plano or uh, tackle box holder and replace it with a rectangular bucket. So I know a lot of anglers go down that route. It's not something that I did on this particular kayak, but I think on the next one that is something that I'm going to explore. It does provide a little bit more of a deeper um, storage container solution and uh, I think one that I'm going to utilize going forward. Now moving to the front of the kayak, we've got our big storage container here. My, typically what mine looks like, I keep quite a significant sized container of soft plastics in the front, uh, a little chamois, a ruler, a bit of food, some water, sunglasses, hat, and just a spare little rag. So keeping it pretty simple. On tournament days, I'll also keep all my spare parts in there as well. So in case I do have a little issue out in the water, I'm able to fix my mast or something to do with the drive or the kayak in general. So just a really small uh, specific toolkit on tournament days, but on socials, I tend to keep it pretty light wherever possible. 
So underneath the front storage hatch powering my Lowrance Elite TI2 unit, I've got a nine inch sounder on this kayak. It is an FPV power, 17 and a half amp hour lithium battery. So pretty simple connection there and it's just sitting on that mast. I'll spin that around so you guys can see, but a couple of clips holding that to the mast. Super stable, doesn't move around at all. It's very easy for me to unplug it, put a little uh, connector there to stop any rust or water going in. Allows me to take that battery off and charge it at home. So there it is, comes straight off. And then you just push it back on to connect it back to the mast. And that's it in terms of battery solutions for the kayak. Um, and as I mentioned, Lowrance Elite TI2, amazing sounder, great value for money, and a fantastic unit for kayakers. I've got mine sitting on a ram bracket here. I think this is a one and a half inch ram mount with a six inch arm, which gives me a bit of flexibility and movement in being able to just turn this uh, depending on the situation and how I'm sitting and where I'm fishing. Now, underneath my kayak, I have a Burley Pro transducer shield. This is protecting my three-in-one active imaging transducer, which is plugged into my Lowrance Elite TI2 unit. In terms of the setup, very straightforward. Just two cables at the back of the unit, one for power and one for the transducer. Super simple and low maintenance. Now that Burley Pro transducer shield just gives me the confidence to launch in beachy locations, sandy, rocky, river edges, knowing that my transducer is going to be protected. In terms of rod storage, as you guys can see in the front of the kayak, there are six rod tubes. So what I'm running pretty, pretty much on every outing is six to eight rods. The great thing about these is they are quite wide, so you can double stack some of these holes and put multiple rods through. For some anglers, running six to eight rods may seem like a bit of an overkill, but in a tournament situation, I think it's really quite important to have that flexibility and those options in case things go wrong, or if you need to change your plans really quickly, and it will save you a lot of time re-tying. So that's why I run six to eight every time I'm out there, especially in tournament situations. And the amazing thing about the PA14 is there's just so much room to be able to do that without it feeling like everything's getting really cluttered and you have no room to move around. Now, let's talk about stability. The Hobie Pro Angler 14 is close to one meter in width, which allows it to be super stable on the water and allows me to fish either side of the kayak really comfortably depending on what the wind conditions are and where the schools of fish are. The other great thing about the PA14 is it allows me to comfortably stand and fish. So it allows me to see up nice and high without having to sit down, but it gives me that flexibility to stand whenever I need to, as well as allowing for things such as toilet breaks where required, and being able to comfortably stand in relatively windy conditions. It all comes down to experience, but that's one of the great things that I absolutely love about my PA14 is the amazing stability that this hull provides. In terms of drives, I'm running the V2 Mirage drive on this Hobie kayak. Now, this is the drive that came with the kayak when I purchased it secondhand. Again, this is a 2014 model, so the 180 technology, reverse, or 360 was not available at the time. Now, I haven't gone down the path of upgrading this to have the reverse capabilities, um, the drive's been super solid for me. It's never let me down. I regularly service this at Scott Lovig Hobie anyway to replace any of the parts that are starting to look a little bit worn out, um, replacing some of the masts in case they get bent throughout the tournament year. And also, as I mentioned earlier, carry spares on tournament days and in tournament situations. But going forward, I'm really looking forward to trying out the 360 drive on the next kayak. But for me, the V2 Mirage Drive has been super solid and absolutely flawless. In terms of transportation, I run my Hobie PA14 on a Dunbeer little nipper trailer. And there's two points of um, tie down points that I've got. One being on the nose there, as you guys can see. And the other one is about halfway along the kayak, just in front of that wheel arch. So I've got one tie down point right there 
and another one on the other side. So just run a big ratchet strap underneath the seat over the kayak and that keeps it nice and secure on the trailer. Makes trailering super easy. And the reason why I prefer the trailer over uh, car topping is I've generally run four wheel drives that are relatively high. Just allows me to save my back a little bit and um, I've just found it more suitable for my particular situation. Now while this wrap looks a little bit worse for wear, I can guarantee you that underneath the hull is still pretty much pristine with just a few minor scratches. This wrap's been on the kayak for over five years now and has held up incredibly well. I fished a lot of really heavy structure such as oyster racks at Foster, a lot of time spent around Princess Pier in Port Melbourne where as a lot of you may know there's some really heavy muscle growth on all the pylons. The wrap just keeps it nice and protected but also just gives me an opportunity to represent my sponsors and get a little bit of exposure for them as I travel around. All right, all in all though, what an incredible kayak. As I've talked about, lots of storage, amazing stability, at rest when you're standing up, the ability to fish you know, in some really nice rough conditions when the fit, those fish are really biting, lots of rod storage as well. So as I mentioned, in my kayak, I'm running six to eight rods. Um, having to double stack on uh, the occasions that I am running eight. So there's six rod tubes in there from factory. Uh, plenty of room in those rod tubes, especially for the guys that are running bait casters. So they're nice and uh, slimline in terms of profile and the guide set. So it is a little bit easier to run bait casters in those rod tubes if you do want to double stack. Um, fantastic integration, obviously, with the Lowrance units. Nice and easy to install the transducer underneath the hull and some fantastic accessories from Burley Pro for the transducer shield as well as the uh, sun visor there on the sounder, which just makes it a lot easier for me to see the screen in bright sunlight. So to wrap up my final thoughts on the kayak, I think the my 2014 PA has been super, super solid. I've owned it for over five years, five and a half years now, traveled up and down the East Coast. I've done many, many tournaments in it. Um, also obviously taken it on a stack of social fishing trips out in the bay, in all the rivers, fresh water, salt water, it doesn't matter. So for those that are looking for a fantastic tournament and a general fishing kayak, I highly recommend the Hobie Pro Angler 14. And I'm looking forward to trying out the new PA 360, the 14 model in the coming months. So stay tuned for an, another episode in the future as I start to uh, fit out the new PA 360. Really looking forward to it. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode and I'll see you next time. Cheers.